In the, in the last few years, Minecraft command blocks have exploded in popularity. Even just since I started making videos, I've seen massive increases in the number of people interested in using command blocks. Which, by the way, I'm sure is 100% something I can take credit for, obviously. But as time has gone on and more people have started using command blocks, I've realized something rather painful. I kinda suck at command blocks. Like, okay, I'm not the worst, but sometimes I see things that people have made and I'm like, Wow, I have no idea how I would make that. And so today, I'm going to go ahead and try to make a complete 3D graphing calculator with command blocks. This is probably going to be a multi-video process, and to be honest, I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to do this all the way as I hope I am. But, you know, I'm not going to find out unless I try. So the way I see this, there are basically two steps to our graphing calculator. We have to have some way of taking an equation from the player and calculating the result of it, and then we have to have some way of displaying the result of that equation on our graph. For today, I'm going to focus on the first of these two things, which is actually the harder of the two, I'd say. So I think the way we're going to want to represent our equations here is with blocks as symbols. So the scheme I came up with is basically concrete is used for numbering digits. So like red here is going to be one, and white is zero. Then the different shades of wool are going to be used as operators. So say yellow could be times, and then we have red we said was one, blue let's say is minus, orange is three, and then zero. So this whole thing together reads out 10 times one minus 20. Now, even with a setup like this, uh, this is gonna be really complicated. So um, there's, basically no way I'm going to be able to give a coherent explanation of how I'm planning to do this, um, like as I'm doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and do it and then basically just record a voiceover explanation. So yeah. So the task here is to take our row of blocks, which represent numbers and operators, and then calculate the equation that it represents. Luckily, I've actually done something similar already in a real programming language, Java, back when I made like a text-based graphing calculator for a school project. So I have at least a little bit of an idea of how to go about this. Basically, the key to making it work was abstraction. Abstraction is a computer programming term, which basically means breaking a large task into several smaller steps so that you can create simpler functions for each task. That way you can basically do each part individually without worrying about the whole big picture all at once. So in my case, I sort of had three, I guess you could call them layers of functions. The first layer condensed each row of concrete into the number that it represents, and then stores that number temporarily in a scoreboard. The second takes all numbers that are just separated by multiply or divide, and calculates that product all together and again stores it into a scoreboard. And then finally the last layer takes all of our products and adds or subtracts them together to get your final sum. Now obviously the technical implementation of each of these is a little bit complicated. I kind of have like a cursor you could call it, it's a marker entity that travels forward returning numbers, products, and eventually the sum as it travels through the equation. So each function, number, product, and sum, pushes the cursor forward until it encounters a block that is basically not part of that function, which means that it needs to go on to the next function. So for example, when it's running product, it's going to go forward until it gets to a plus or a minus, at which point the product function will end until it's called again by the sum function. So if this sounds complicated, that's because it is pretty complicated. This whole thing consists of only like eight functions, most of which are under five lines of code, but I still spent over an hour on it, and I went through at least three iterations before it actually worked. So honestly, if this explanation doesn't make sense, really don't worry, it's just meant to be like a vague, hand-wavy idea of giving some idea of what's going on here. If you're really interested in learning more, I believe this kind of interpreter is called a recursive descent parser. Um, or at least this is an adaptation of a recursive descent parser, so you can always look those up. I honestly found that looking them up was filled with like technical jargon and it made very little sense to me, but hey, you know, if you feel like spending a long time researching that, then that sounds like a fun time. So. I'm pretty sure this is working at this point. To test it and demonstrate it, I guess, I built up this here little equation. Um, it's kind of hard to tell what the equation means when it's, you know, just colored blocks like this. I'll probably make a texture pack at some point, but for now I'll just tell you this is 2 times 3, or 6, plus 1, 5, 15, 6, plus 15, it should be equal to 21. Um, and if we run our function, 
we see it does in fact come out to 21. Technically you'll see it is 2100. I basically multiplied all the values by a hundred because Scoreboards can only be stored as whole numbers, and so by having everything be 100 times bigger, we effectively have two quote-unquote decimal points, because then we can just divide things by 100 when we're actually like displaying it on the calculator or whatever it is we're going to do. It's not a perfect way to do it, but I, I guess it gets the job done. Um, and I mean, yeah, that's kind of it for now. I know this is literally just one thing, but this is up there with, I'd say, some of the most technically complicated things that I've actually made with command blocks. So I have no idea how this video is going to come out. It might be like, you know, five minutes long or something, but I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, next time I work on this, I'm probably going to set up some way to actually have it graph. As you can see, I was doing a little bit of a vague testing up there um but we still have a long ways to go with that stay tuned stick around let me know whether or not you liked this new kind of video because i thought it was kind of fun but if you guys don't like it then hey either way thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time goodbye